All right, Jake Kilroy here with Special Team Servants, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about the drop of the pot. All right. Um, first things first, hand placement on the ball. All right. So, you, so the ball comes back, you catch the ball. All right. I always, I always see a bunch of high school kids holding balls all different kinds of crazy ways. I've seen people just kind of take the ball and just kind of throw it out with two hands. Um, back when I first started punting, I used to hold the ball, kind of I'd grip it like this, and I would hold it off to the side. Everybody kind of has their own unique little style of punting and uh, how to hold the ball. The important thing is to make sure that your hold is consistent every time and um, you've got a hold that's going to be flat and it's going to maximize your, your punt every time. All right, so I'm going to show you guys a way in which I hold the ball, um, the way in which I was taught to hold the ball and so forth. All right? So you're in your punting stance and the ball comes back. All right? General rule of thumb, they always say you kind of want to hold the ball like you're like shaking somebody's hand. All right? I always kind of place my uh, that's supposed to be like my ring finger on my right hand, right? On the bottom seam of the football, right? So the finger goes here, right? And it kind of rolls so forth. My thumb is going to go on the white lace here, and I'm just going to grip it nice and easy, right? I'm not going to grip it real hard, right? But I'm just going to let that ball kind of sit in there and get a nice little grip. As you can kind of see a little bit, there's, a, there's space between my hand and the ball, right? So you're going to leave a little bit of room there. Not, again, you're not going to rest all the way on there, um, and you want this the point of the ball between your thumb and your index finger here. Right? Your other hand, the placement of your other hand is going to come, just going to sit right on the ball. Kind of put your thumb like right on where it says Wilson, just nice and comfortable. Okay. The placement of your of the ball, you're going to want this ball to be right on the outside of your kicking leg. You don't want to hold it inside your body. You don't want to hold it outside your body but right on the outside of your kicking leg, right? Just like that, okay? So again, put this finger here around this bottom seam. Thumb is gonna go up about right here on this white lace. You're gonna set the ball nice and comfortable. You should be able to rotate the ball, but I'm not gripping it real hard, okay? And this other hand's gonna come rest on just like this, okay? That ball's gonna be on the outside of your kicking leg, just like that. All right, so we're gonna continue on with once we've got the ball, we've got our position here, right? Hold the ball the way we want it. We're going to talk about the drop, the actual physical drop of the ball, okay? Again, it's going to, it's going to be kind of hard, especially, like you said, the ball comes back, and you're not going to have time to think about, oh my gosh, like I've got the ball, and I've got to get my finger here, got to get my fingers in the correct position. All right, and that's going to come with practice, all right? So you're going to want to take practice of getting the ball, placing it in your hands. All right, we'll talk about that here in a little bit but the actual physical drop of the ball, right? When I go through my steps, right, this hand comes off the ball, the actual physical drop, we want the drop of this ball to be nice and flat, right? We don't want the ball to drop and the, the point of the ball to go down and hit the ground. We don't want to allow the back end of the ball to drop first. We want that ball to be nice and flat, okay? General rule of thumb, when I drop the ball, and if I get a flat drop, it should bounce right back up to me. Nice flat drop. Again, going through the steps. Nice and flat. It should bounce straight back up to me. Okay. So one thing that's really important is to make sure can't stress enough that that drop each and every time is a nice flat drop. So we're going to be talking about keeping that ball flat and the consistency of our drop. All right. So we're going to talk about why is it important to get a nice consistent flat drop every time. All right. As a punter, right, a lot of people we refer to punting as it's an, it's an art form in which, like people say, punting is in your hands, right? And it's kind of a weird statement saying like, punting is in your hands. What do you mean? You kick a ball. Punting is kicking. Well, it starts with the hold and the drop of the ball, right? So the importance of getting a nice flat drop every time, being consistent, right? Again, I've talked about before, if I don't have a flat drop and I point, the ball goes down like this. When I come up through and I kick the ball, I'm going to be kicking the point of the ball, and I'm going to be kicking the front end of the ball. What that's going to do is it's going to come up and it's going to give it a backwards rotation. It's going to go up high, it's not going to go very far. Right? If I punt the ball and I've got the back point like this, when I come up to leg swing, I'm going to kick the back end of it. It's not going to hit my foot completely flat, and it's going to, it's going to tumble forwards. Right? So we're going to really stress on, and I'll show you a drill here in a moment, 
where we can practice our drop. But it's very important that each and every time we've got good placement of the ball, you know, that, that drop is flat each and every time. So when we come up and kick and we hit leg lock at the right impact, that the, the angle of the ball and the angle of the foot, everything is matched, and we're getting a nice flat drop and it's hitting the top of that foot nice and easy just like that. So drills for practice with the drop. All right, earlier we talked about taking our steps along the nice straight line, you know, falling into that first step, following up through, landing on the line, making everything, making sure everything was pointed down the line. We can also do this with our drop. Okay. So we're in our nice pony stance here. All right. Nice arch in the back. Knees are bent. Chest is forward. Arms are nice and relaxed. All right. We've got the ball correctly positioned in our hands. All right. We're still going to take those same steps. We're going to work that approach. But we're going to work on dropping that ball. Again, my right foot is on this line. All right? Maybe I want to shade it just on the inside a little bit because I want to drop that ball on the line. All right? So I've got the ball held out here. Extend those arms out. Keeping this elbow pointed in. All right? Roll that elbow in. Keep that ball on the outside of your leg. Fall. Drop it straight on that line. It should bounce right back up to you. All right? So again, you can just work this straight down. Step, fall. Work on getting that nice flat drop. That ball should be bouncing up and back into your hands each and every time. So here, fall, step, nice flat drop. Step, flat drop each and every time. Okay? Ball's correctly positioned in the hands, ball's out, elbows in, ball's on the outside of that kicking leg, fall, flat drop. Work on getting that flat drop. You can do this up and down. The sidelines, you can go across the field, anywhere that you've got a nice straight line. Even like uh, how Nate Reed uses in his kicking videos, grabbing some tape. Say you don't have any sidelines or you don't have any lines painted on the field, grab some tape, right? Take a piece of tape, create a line yourself. You can do it on pavement, you can do it on the grass, you can do it in the bedroom, it doesn't matter where you do it. Work on putting that kicking leg on that line, getting that ball out, work on getting that nice flat drop, bounce that ball right back up in your hands. During our punt, we have to drop the football, right? Um, this is when the football will leave our hands and fall to our foot. During this time, we are trusting in our athletic ability. We are trusting that our drop is perfect so that we will meet our foot at the sweet spot. If this happens, we are able to punt the ball to our most maximum potential. All of this happens because we are trusting in our drop. Similarly in life, we must come to the realization that our life is only temporary. And there is only one way to eternal life through Jesus Christ. Once we realize this, we have to drop our ways of the past. The Bible says, therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Here we are called not to conform any longer to the pattern of the world. With its behavior and customs that are usually selfish and often corrupting, we are dropping these ways. We need to make the wise decision that this behavior is off limits. Our refusal to conform to the world's values must go even deeper. We need to be transformed by renewing our mind. God has good, pleasing, and perfect plans for his children. God wants us to be transformed. God wants us to have renewed minds. God wants us to live for him. He wants this because he wants only what is best for us and because he gave his son to make our new lives possible. We should joyfully drop our old ways and offer ourselves up as living sacrifices each and every day.